gather round friends, new and old. And what's crackling? Welcome to Roast and Toast. We are your hosts, Philip, David, and Jenny. What's cracking? A lacking? No, 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 no. What's crackling? As What's crackling? Crackling, oh, yes. Oh, I see. We're the hosts of Roasts and Toasts. We yes, just manifested you guys- that ambience so fast. That was just right there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, guys, it has been an eventful week. It's been an eventful recording. because It has. Um, yes. Yes, uh, it's been an eventful week. Uh, I'll go first. Um, the, what happened for me is that I have been feeling adventurous and I needed to go out and go on a hike. So I did. Um, but what's new is I normally go out fully garbed. I look like the serial killer you see that, uh, that uh, they warn you about. I wear a jacket, I wear sweat, sweat pants, I wear layers because I really like to sweat it out. Whenever I work out, I need, I really want to feel, I really want to get uh, the, a good you lather. You want the sauna experience. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Give me hot yoga or give me hot. And so whenever, but this, the difference here was that it's so hot now that I was like, you know what? Let's go reverse. I'm pretty pasty right now. Let me go out and uh, tan myself. So I went out, no shirt, no shoes, no service, but I did get a, did go on on a hike. But my mistake was that I went out midday. And why that was a mistake was the sun was at its absolute apex, meaning I have a really solid tan on my shoulders and burn. And that's it. I didn't, I didn't tan my chest, didn't tan my back. And let me tell you, whenever you're taking a shower, hitting those shoulders each and every day on that burn freaking hurt. It hurt. So I've had to deal with an entire week of sunburn. Yes. An entire week of sunburn. Uh, That would probably be the most eventful thing of my week. Jenny, what happened for you during your week? Well, this is uh, th- this week was the first time I've ever won anything with the superpower of my vocal impressions. Wow! So I oh. got to uh, go participate in a trivia night over in Gilbert, Arizona, at a bar called Wicked Rain. They are a, P- a Pacific Northwest themed bar that has all these fantastic beers, lots of great IPA selections, and they Ooh. host trivia from time to time. They had a Pokemon trivia, and my team was able to score third place, but only because the tiebreaker between us and another team for third place required us to do an impression of Pikachu. And guess who won? Pika Pika. Pika P. (laughs) There we go. So we got third place, and I got a pretty sick um, Squirtle pint glass out of it, so... All right, uh, but that's all I got so far. Hey, David, what's going on with you this week? Hold on. Before we get to David, though, I did forget. I Two oh, important oh, oh, things. Oh, okay. I, sorry, sorry. One moment, one moment. Two things, David, before I, I forgot in the, in the whole entrance, I got to crackling and then and everything lost. Two things. One, one, we forgot to announce, we have branding. We have a new podcast logo. It's freaking that's beautiful. That's right. That happened, and that will be announced on this podcast right here, right now. We have our image. It's beautiful. God, it looks beautiful. All right, it so that's look number really one. good. Yes, it's an it's an aside. Go and look at it. Go look at our socials if you haven't seen it. It's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, but but more uh, more importantly, what we forgot to say is that uh, as of last week, we did have our big Mother's Day extravaganza, and uh, we just never had a chance to recap the scores. And this will lead beautifully into David as me and my mother came in second with two points. David and Jackie won the whole damn thing with three points of our Mother's Day extravaganza. Yes, and Jenny and Rhonda participated. They had a wonderful show. <laughs> <laughs> they had a Savage. point. Listen, so listen. One point, right? Yeah. It was our yeah. first time playing the game. I know next time we will be coming for y'all's throats and we will score first place. I say it wow. here right now. That was aggressive. Oh, the gauntlet is thrown. But I'm very that- confident that we'll score next time much higher. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I bow down now to the winner. Congratulations, David, for winning last week's episode. Yeah, yeah, yes. How did you and yeah, how did you and Jackie celebrate your winning? That's so eating some pasta. Are uh, we? I don't even remember when we recorded. I we had a uh, Mother's Day brunch the next day. That was a delightful. We had a delightful Mother's Day brunch, and I did uh, I did some of the cook in there. So that was that was very nice. That was very very nice. We we love our brunches. 
our home brunches. The, the Hoffmans are a brunch family. Eggs. Uh, oh yeah, we like we do it all, and uh, OJ coffee, mm. and then my brother always wants to pop open some champagne and make mimosas, and everyone else is like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, There's always one. Give me the champagne. Give me the orange juice. I'm not that crazy about the two mixed together. Anyway, really? Now that's a now that's a bite me if ever I heard. I'll I'll I'll. Keep I guess that in I mind. guess it's not like so forward. Yeah, it's not so forward that it would um that mm, it because mm. you're like eh, I'll take it. But I think if I was different. gonna have a breakfast cocktail, I'd choose something else. I think I'd Bloody Mary. Else. Yeah. Yeah. No, not that either. But there are there are cocktails that are not traditional breakfast cocktails that you can mm-hmm. that you could justify having for breakfast. Like mm-hmm. a missionary's downfall is a classic tiki cocktail, and it it tastes like a smoothie. It's amazing. <laughs> it's basically pineapple juice, lime juice, mint, and peach liqueur and rum. Mm, something but like, but it's breakfast. not very strong. It's not a it's not a super strong cocktail. It's the amount of rum compared to juices and oh, and honey. Put honey in it as well. So it's like it basically Jeez. tastes like. Peach, honey, and pineapple and mint. Like it's just, it's just like a smoothie. It's Ooh, delicious. sounds like a story. Hey? This I'm down for that. Is my idea of a breakfast cocktail? Well, uh, just by the way, I had a good week. Okay, I had a good week. I went to go see Jim Jeffries live in Rotterdam, and that was that. Jim was Jeffries very is a comedian. Oh, I see. I see. Speaking of crackling, would you rather crackle or schmackle? That's my great transition for the next segment of this game. <laughs> uh, I'll take a schnackle whenever I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I've got my cheese puffs here right now. So we are playing a little would you rather this week. We've got two questions for eat the other two co-hosts each. And let's just start asking away, shall we? The audience knows how this works. They are professional regulars this game. So who wants to start off this round? Why not? I'll do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go, you go, you go, go ahead. ahead. You go okay, 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 wonderful. Okay, I'll, okay. <laughs> I'll ask you a question here, Jenny. Uh, okay. Jenny, my first question for you. If you were to be in a fight, would you rather be armed with only a ping pong paddle or a wiffle ball bat? A ping pong paddle or a wiffle ball bat. Remind me, wiffle ball bats are like, are they? They're hollow. They're they they look wooden, but they're incredibly hollow. You can almost like crush it if you really squeezed it. Um, mm, and it's, okay. it's makes it almost makes like a dong sound. Hmm. I'll go for ping pong paddle because I think ping pong paddle would do a little bit more damage. When it comes to the combat portion of a fight, the wiffle ball bat sounds like it wouldn't it wouldn't have much effect on the enemy or the op the, the or the the other person if you try to hit them with it. Ping pong might be able to leave a couple marks, so I'll say ping pong. All right, so my first question I have for David: <clears throat> mm. Would you rather live without winter or live without summer? Live without winter. Hands oh, yeah. down. <laughs> the only thing good about winter is skiing. And if I had a choice, I would I, I would give that up before anything summer. Easy. This, this is the difference, Jenny, between somebody who lives in Arizona and somebody who mm-hmm. doesn't live in Arizona. Because for mm-hmm. us, this is a real decision. For David, who has to go through real winter, it's not. Like for us, it's like, ooh, ooh, it's really hot. But then it's kind of like really chilly at night. So like what would I prefer? And so it's like a, it's much closer to 50-50 than what David had. David's mm-hmm. like, are you kidding me? I have to drive in a blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forget the blizzard. I, I would take the blizzard. For me, for where I live, you don't even get blizzard. All you get is gray, rainy misery. It's so much worse. I would, I would, I would kill for some snow. Snow is beautiful, but all we get is just drizzle and f-ing misery. Anyway, um, speaking of Phillip, misery, <laughs> Philip. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take a little drive down to Sweet Home Alabama here. Oh boy! Will, would you will, rather will. see your cousin, cousin? naked? Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> would you rather see your cousin naked or your cousin see you naked? For the purpose of this exercise, do I get to know? Is it a? 
I guess it doesn't truly matter. Is it a boy cousin or a it's girl a, cousin? It's a girl cousin. Of course, it's a girl cousin. Um, <laughs> Alabama. Well, luckily, all I'm trying to think. Do I have any young cousins? I'm pretty so. Luckily, I'm sure. Like, there's nothing. Like, all my cousins are of my age group, so that's nice. Um, I don't have to worry about anything beyond uh, just the awkwardness. Let's go with. You know what? You know what? I'd much rather them see me naked. You know, got have a gift today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should be so lucky. Oh, yeah. You know, why am I even making this? You know, darn it. Next Thanksgiving, well, whammo. <laughs> uh, co- content for the podcast. Behold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Behold, well, family. Yeah. Somebody <sighs> pass me the turkey leg while I show off my turkey leg. Uh, goodness oh, me. Oh, Goodness uh, me. All image. right. That's an image. All right. Uh, David, I mm. have a question for you. As a lawyer, would you rather be forced to defend a brutal serial killer or mm. the grandmaster of the KKK? Oh, God. Boy. Oh, boy. You know what that was, folks? That was a stop yawner. David was in the middle of a yawn, a very, a very respectful, <laughs> quiet yawn because he didn't want to he didn't want to get through it. But then immediately halfway through, he was like at the bottom of his of his of his uh yawn he was like, oh, and then he was like oh shoot what is that oh my gosh oh, my yeah God, that's, that's a horrible. real toughie yeah <laughs> um this is why you don't become a lawyer this is why you don't do it oh, just God, don't do it um wow that i okay the serial killer like the brutal serial killer it's kind of clear he, he's on trial for murdering um but the, the grandmaster of the <laughs> murdering serials <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> the Grand Master of the KKK. What crime is he specifically on trial for? Let's let's start off because easy. Maybe, maybe we'll we'll adjust it. But let's it go with were, like embezzlement. If it were unpaid parking tickets, maybe I could be like, you know, at least I'm not defending her, his horrific, you know, political position. Um, let's go with embezzlement. You know what? No, I would I would defend the serial killer. I would defend the serial killer. You know why? Why? Because because everyone has the right to a defense, including, yeah, everybody, I guess. But at least with the serial killer, like... Maybe the serial killer killed a racist? I d- <laughs> <laughs> this is a horrible, horrible question. <laughs> God. Oh, man. You know, oh, I'm man. going with the serial killer. I I don't know. I I don't know if, how I can justify this, <laughs> but I feel like if I'm not going to defend either of these people very well, I feel like there's going to oh. be like it's so going to you- be easier to 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 justify like, well, you know, he deserved a defense and and um with 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 the serial killer having murdered people, if especially if there's uh, like clear evidence that it that he, he's guilty, then you know all I'm doing really is bargaining with how much of a sentence he gets, and like, oh, let's push for twenty five years instead of sixty, you know. Um, whereas, like with with the the other guy, with the KKK guy, it's like I don't know like, because the, it's not as clear cut a crime. I could if I was if I did it if I did my job well, maybe I even get the guy off, you know, like I get him completely. So he doesn't have to serve any time at all, and I I wouldn't want that. So no, I'm gonna go with the serial killer, where he's probably gonna get convicted either way. <sighs> Damn you! That was horrible. I didn't feel <laughs> good about anything it, I just said. He did all that with a smile. Uh, Jenny, Jenny, um, would you rather get lost at sea or in the desert? Your companion shall be the last person person you texted, other than either of us. I would probably say. Hmm. That's actually a very difficult who, question. Who are you going to be lost at sea? Well, with? I would well, be lost desert. with. Uh, it's probably going to be our, our upcoming guest for the game, right? Yes, it's actually our okay. upcoming guest for the game. All so, right. I, I would I wouldn't mind getting lost with them actually, um, because I love them to pieces. The to answer the question though, I would say lost at sea. Wow, because. Lost a de- in the desert, I think it would be much easier to potentially make contact or find sustainable land if I was 
caught in the middle of the ocean versus being stuck in the middle of the desert where there's probably mm. much lo- a much wider uh, distance between cities as well as um, it would be much harder to find resources in the desert versus the sea. So I will say lost at sea. Can I interject just with, I know we usually don't do this, but I would much rather choose the desert because I, I don't really? want to drown. Like drowning is like a top fear of, also, like not a Jenny, fear that I act on, but I just, I don't want to drown. You're lost at sea. Maybe you're lucky and it's the Aegean Sea full of islands and not that far from any anywhere, but could also be the Pacific Ocean, which is much bigger than any desert. Hmm. Well, think about it. In the desert, it's very hot temperatures. That's a much slower descent into madness versus trying to do lost at sea. Wouldn't it be sped up? Right. Yeah, right. either way, either way. You know, to, to each their own. In the desert? You know? No. In the desert? <laughs> Go on, Jenny. <laughs> All right, Philip. I got my first one here for you now. Yeah. <clears throat> Would you rather slide down a giant rainbow or jump from cloud to cloud? <laughs> <laughs> I know, very, very innocent. Would you rather question? Or no, figured, no. Eh, why not? No, I trust me. I've got, I've got all types of questions for you guys. Uh, but let's go with this. All right, let me take this seriously. Um, I'm gonna go with rainbow for two reasons. Uh, I'll start with the reason why mm-hmm. not the cloud. Not the clouds. How often? How truly often, unless I go and actually hike Mount Everest or a, a, a colossal mountain, will I have a chance to go and get to a cloud? And if I were to go, let's say, skydiving, would I not then just break everything by diving out the plane and then bouncing up? Or would it be a soft bounce? There's too many things to where I would not be able to use that. However, mm-hmm. I, I'm all for a slide on a rainbow, and at least it hits land at some point, right? So, I mean, I, I'm... I'm all for a slide. I like a good slide. I like a good water slide. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. let's go with the rainbow. And hopefully, on my way down, I can taste it. Uh, speaking of speaking of fun things to uh, ponder here, Jenny. Jenny, here's your super. I'm gonna hate. You're gonna hate me. Uh, question in your teenager's room. Would you rather find a vial of cocaine or a gun? Mm. Jenny's mouth is a gate. She and Jenny I is. Not, is I would not. I would not hate you for this question, Philip. I still hate you for that other question. <laughs> is there a none, none of the above option? No, you got. Um, you got to get in that room and and sort through some stuff, emotional and physical. Um, I would say probably a gun. I would rather would rather want to find a gun because if there's a vial of cocaine. How, how, what size are we talking here? What size vial? I'm assu- In general, the idea of my teenager doing drugs sounds awful. That sounds like they, if they have, if they're trying to hide it in their room, they must either be hiding it for someone who they shouldn't even be associated with them in the first place, or they have been already doing cocaine for a certain period of time, and that would really, really bother me. Um, but ah, I- but but if they have the gun and they're a teenager and you don't know about it, they probably mm-hmm. got it illegally. That's true, too. Either way, the situation, I don't want to find any of these items in there. No, but, this is not a good situation to be in. But it would bring me more comfort knowing that I'd be less scared about if my child has been consuming drugs. At least, at least you can get rid of a gun and, and get it out of their space. It's the that's that seems like a more it's been easier thing to remove from the room and solve whatever problem associated with it versus trying to deal with a drug problem. So I would say gun. All right. David, mm. would you rather break out into laughter at a funeral or at a wedding? He's done both, but <laughs> <laughs> during the ceremony, I'm guessing. Yes, right smack dab in the middle of the ceremony. And we're talking about like like raucous laughter. Yes, can, straight can up say, cackle, David. Can we say during the vows? I think that that's almost worse. During the vows, when it's like, Catherine, you are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I think I'm going to go with funeral. <laughs> I'm going to go with funeral because I'm hoping then that like everyone will just go, oh, he's grieving. He's just he's dealing with it in, in, a, in an odd way. He's gone mad. Just, uh, let, leave him be. Whereas like at, at a wedding, people are going to be like, hey, what's with the crazy? 
you know, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. like how disrespectful, like they're both yeah, coming out. I don't know. Crazy. I think funeral. Yeah. Yeah. I, but funeral, I think I have a chance at like, you know, oh, he's grieving, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with funeral. All right. Philip, would you rather fist fight Conor McGregor or Ariana Grande? Oh, <laughs> Oh, this is easy. I'm, I'm fist fighting easy? Ariana. Gr- yeah, of course. I'm fist fighting Ariana Grande and and tying my hands back. And baby, go at it. No, at nope. It. You gotta beat her up. <laughs> or what? Or what? This is the, don't question me. No, you no. made me defend a friggin' <laughs> serial killer. Because look, look. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. I, I I'm sure Ariana Grande is, is, is wonderful. Has has a, a, a eccentric calves for all the dancing that she does. You know she's she's wonderful. I'm sure she's perfectly bad. But you're not saying Ronda Rousey here, right? So if like I, I like if it well, were that's Ronda- the point. That's the point. You're it's Conor McGregor where you're gonna get your ass beaten, or Ariana Grande where you're you have a good shot of winning this fight, but it's at the cost of like you are gonna beat up this this woman whom you adore so dearly okay so then so then it's okay then it flips easy okay if i have to actually accept the premise it's gonna be conor mcgregor yeah here's you why do, here's that's why the point of this game yes okay fine 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 it will be conor mcgregor and here's why because conor mcgregor I don't think that I could say anything so incendiary that he won't like me so if he knows for whatever reason that we're in a fight not only will he know how to, but I'm sure he will just knock me out in like one hit. So will that one hit hurt? Absolutely. But he's not going to like draw it out, even though he could. Why would he want to play with his food? If he's like, hey, I'm in the ring with this guy who knows absolutely not what he's doing. He's going to draw me like a bag of rocks. I'm going to be throwing out like a beef like a beef stew that's three days old. I'm, I'm, there's nothing about me that's going to like be able to avoid this. He's going to just completely, he's not going to knock out a kneecap of mine. He's going to just be like a skilled tactician taking my ass out to town. And, and I'm not going to even get coffee. First. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. So uh, Conor McGregor and Ariana Grande will will nurse me back to health is, is how this is going down. All right. My last question, and it is for you, David. Uh-huh. Would you rather, if you have to swim a mile to save your life, you have to swim a mile to save your life, would you rather do it with a 20-pound weight tied to your waist or with mm. five-pound weights tied to your wrists and ankles? Uh, I, I, I'm going to say 20 pounds tied to my waist. I feel like that's oh. actually fairly, uh, the, fairly simple decision. Um, uh, I feel like you're going to tire your arms way more quickly by tying weights to your arms, especially your wrists. Cause that's where the most motion happens. And right. You're literally like mechanically speaking, that's going to be much more, you're putting way more work into the motion required to swim. So easy. Easy, 20 pounds attached to my waist. All right, now do it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> if it's so easy. Just yeah, kidding. Yeah. Um, all right, Jenny, my final question is for you. Yes? Would you rather be drunk at an AA meeting or be baked as a muffin at a funeral? I don't know why so much funeral talk today, but... I know. I would definitely say baked at a funeral. There you because- go. Baked, baked <laughs> yeah. as a muffin at a funeral. <laughs> yeah, because at least the it, it would just be this. I mean, both obviously are extremely disrespectful. Um, but the idea of me showing up drunk to an AA meeting, it just sounds it, – at least like it's it's just like a slap in the face to anyone who's a recovering addict if you are in that room, if you just show up in a – you're just drunk as a skunk. For me, big as a muffin at a funeral, you would at least be able to be on your own. And you could like be in the corner and not get noticed by people because people will be focused obviously on the funeral and not yourself. So that's easier to hide versus straight up being wibbly wobbly timey wimey at an AA meeting. So that's my answer for you, David. So Philip, would you rather update your social media every time you poop? Or every time you have sex, as in, as in, you have to publish that you that you just did that thing. Yes, you have to specify. Damn, the 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 the, the sh- won't quit her. 
I'm on a roll today with my. <laughs> you really are. I love it. I love it. I love it, Jenny. Uh, keep it up. Keep it up. That, that, what I mean, say that, you, Philip? We we don't know in time, <laughs> but if we could. I think that's a strong contender for our title of this episode. We don't usually do this during the end, during the thing, but the <laughs> won't quit her. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay. Every time I have sex. <sighs> if I had. Or every time, yeah. Look, look, look. Okay. If I did not have family, honestly, if I did not have family, I think that this would be a true 50%, 50-50. But because I have family and I just know People within my family, my we had just had my lovely mother on last week, uh, who, as far as she knows, I've never had sex. I've never, I've, you know, who, I, so, I mean, realistically, this should be an easy question. But uh, on the, <laughs> accepting the premise, I don't think that I could do that to uh, people I know so, co- I mean, of course, certain times it'd be like a brag, I'm sure, like, but I guess here's the thing is that um, sometimes we just want to all brag about those poos. You ever have one of those where you're just like, maybe, maybe I'm just going to, I'm just going to let this little, this little chocolate cone stand right here for a second and just stand back and admire that moment. Chocolate Lisa. cone. <laughs> look, look, you, you guys tell me right like now. The emoji. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys tell me right now that you have not stood back one time, at least one time. I'm not saying every time, but at least stood back and admired the work that you've accomplished. You tell me in good faith that you do that most once. times. Yeah, exactly. Come yeah. on. Come on. You just got to stand up, look down, yeah, check I will it say there's been like, times where I'm like, they, wow, that came out of me? Yeah. Exactly. So who it's among like you us? Look down, it's like, wow. Yeah. Who among us could not say, you know what? Every once in a while, let's do it. Let's let's post this puppy. So, I mean, let's go with the... Uh, it's will, uh, not every once in a while. It's every single time. <laughs> every once. Yeah, I guess that's true. Every every poop is yeah. posted. You know that uh, those, like, maybe the, you have, like, you poop in the morning and then, like, two hours later, you weirdly have to poop again. You're going to post again and you're going to be like, well, I guess I wasn't done. Had to poop again. On a roll today. <laughs> this post is brought to you by Chipotle. <laughs> Another week, another mini segment. This week's uh, mini seg is pop quiz. Now, it will be me quizzing the both of you on something that you should both either know or know enough about me to uh, truly gain the answer that I will be quizzing you on. Deduce. Yes, deduce. So uh, this one, I know that you both know in some small recess of your brain. uh, It's just a matter of whether or not you remembered it. During our episode, Everything Reviewed All at Once, I gave a historic That Slaps, as it was only the second game ever to be included into the That Slaps catalog, and first from the main hosts. As you both were there, what was the name of that game? Was it A, Burger Guru Tycoon? Was it B, Galactic Gastronaut? Was it C, Godlike Burger? Or was it D, Space Food Frenzy? I'm, uh, let's go with David, who seems more unsure than Jenny. David, you first. What Which was the one question was? Question again. <laughs> we need to repeat on those uh, answer options, please, Philip. As well. All right, I so guys, uh, the, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. So during the episode, our episode where yeah, we during reviewed the episode, e- blah blah blah. Yes, I uh, my that slaps selection was a game. I was very excited about a game, and it was historic in that it was only the second game ever uh, given in a That Slaps in the That Slaps era catalog as of as of this recording, uh, because it was the second game first uh, from the main hosts. What was the name of that game that I gave? Was it A Burger mm. Guru Tycoon, B Galactic Gastronaut, C Godlike Burger, or D Space Food Frenzy? Burger Guru Tycoon, Galactic Gastronaut, Godlike Burger, Space Food Frenzy. David? I'm going to say C, Godlike Burger. And Jenny? I don't remember the name. I don't remember the name being very elaborate and just colorful. So my gut is telling me me C, Godlike Burger. So you both are going with Godlike Burger, mm-hmm. and you both would get the point that doesn't matter at all because it was indeed Godlike Burger. So congratulations oh, to both yes! of you! Yes, yeah, excellent gut feeling for the win. Yes, congratulations! Fantabulous. All that tabulous. Oh, 
All right, well, it's time to play our game for this week's episode. But before we start, I have a special guest to bring on to join us for our game. This is my good friend from high school, almost probably a longer friendship than Philip and I have, actually. We have been friends now for, I'd say, 11 or 12 years, since 2012, 2013. So, Bethany Baca, you are on the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Say hello! Hi, everyone! <laughs> Glad hello, to be Bethany. here. <laughs> Welcome, hello, Bethany. <laughs> you, 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 you are measured against Phil, the, the benchmark of all friends in Jenny's life, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're definitely yeah, well. the length of our friendship is easily either within the same realm as Philip, as my friendship with Philip, or even a little bit longer. Be- Bethany is also a fellow actress in the Arizona Valley, and she's getting married next year. She's the future Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, Thank congratulations! You. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, Jenny's going to be one of my bridesmaids. Yep, so it's official. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Well, Bethany yes. has has um, <laughs> she's going to you're going to do awesome on this, Bethany. I'm, I have high hopes. <clears throat> so the game that we are playing this week, I realized that it was episode one thirteen this week. So I was in the mood to talk about mm. superstitions, bad luck, things of that nature. So a little bit of multiple choice goodness. Oh, but before we get into that, we have to get to know you first, Bethany. Um, I've already given away the prompt of this game, though, so now everybody knows. (laughs) All right, so I will go ahead and start with the... Yeah, exactly. So my question for you, Bethany, is what is the weirdest thing in your bag, your purse, your backpack right now? Weirdest thing, I'd probably say my water flavoring. That's your water thing. flavoring. What kind of flavoring are we talking about? <laughs> We're going to need more explanation on that, Bethany. <laughs> it's fruit punch. Fruit punch. Oh, <laughs> it's like the powder stuff. It's it's like those Mio's, but it's the Kroger brand. So <laughs> it's zero calories. And God, I- you friggin weirdo, Bethany. <laughs> I know, I know. God, that's crazy. I, I know, shock. That's why I'm a theater Wild. kid. A- I know, it's a theater kid. <laughs> so theater kids that are weird, I swear. Um, you're, you're sharing this on Instagram. You'll never guess what was revealed on Roast and Toast. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing about the acting community and theater community is that they is that we as a community never realize how weird we are. So the things that we find normal people to be just normal objects are the weird things to us. See, Bethany says it's her water flavoring, and in reality, she probably has a prop dagger in like her fanny pack <laughs> that she has somewhere over there, and she's like, "Yeah, that's normal. That's normal." But God, I don't know why I have fruit punch water flavoring. <laughs> On one of, on one of my shelves in my home, I have this little like tube that looks like lipstick, and someone saw it and was like, "Is that like what is that? Is, why do you have lipstick?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's that's a that's a tear stick that like you rub it under your eyes and makes you cry." And I was like, "Yeah, that's just that's something I have." And, and they were like, "Oh, okay, well, it makes more sense than lipstick, I guess." <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, Philip. I and David. I like in our household, at least George and I's household. He loves Marvel and Spider Man. So our living room, and Jenny can attest, our mm-hmm. living room is just like Spider Man pictures and like the the Infinity Gauntlet from Disneyland. You got like another Spider Man poster here and there. Back to the Future because he loves Back to the Future. Um, so that's normal to me. <laughs> But yeah, the weirdest thing is the water flavoring in my backpack. Yeah, of course, of course. Fruit, yeah, fruit yeah. punch, how odd. Uh, how- all right, Bethany, <laughs> let's get to know you. <laughs> well, let's get to know you a little bit more for my question. Um, if you had to compete for the fate of Earth against the invading alien horde, perhaps against Thanos himself, in a competition of some sort, what arena would your challenge take place in? So maybe a board game? maybe uh, a sport of some kind maybe a bake off what 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 uh, what would you say is our is your best chance at saving the fate of humanity it would have to be a karaoke competition somewhere in Whoa! Scottsdale. Yeah. It would have to be yeah. He's yeah, proving once sure. again why we're friends <laughs> yes exactly and, 
And what's the karaoke go to? I, 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 it's a necessary follow up. A karaoke go to, like yeah. What, what, what's wait, like your what? your song. choice? Yeah, go to song. Your signature oh. signature Ooh. karaoke song. Mm. I have to say, Alicia Keys. I keep on falling. That's my jam. Okay, that's my go to. Right. Yeah. Come one on, that brings Alicia. The bar down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Bethany. Last question here before we move on to the game that uh, Jenny has already pre pre prompted us with. Um, picture your dream house, please. What color is the front door, and why? Wow, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a good question. <laughs> I had a roommate once who just who absolutely dreamed of living in a house with a red door was it would you say the red was fruit punch f- flavored door or <laughs> okay you know what that actually you know i sick. didn't care enough to ask now now i care bethany i would really love to know <laughs> exactly what shade of mustard you would like your door uh, i don't think it'd be mustard i think it'd be more maybe teal maybe light blue bluish Ooh, bluish yeah Bluish yeah. and why? And why? I think blue is very welcoming. Not dark blue necessarily. I feel like that's very yeah. Sad. Blue is very like it's a it's a soft. It's like yeah. come on in. Like yeah, you're, not, you're you're safe here. Not like red where it's like bleh, <laughs> like uh, negative like uh, or F McDonald's. on your grade. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, like, red McDonald's. is in like blue? red just makes me think of um what's that movie American Beauty. Yeah, it makes yeah. me think uh, of exactly. Insidious. There's a big red door in all of those movies. Hmm. Okay. All right. Or like it. I think it. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> it does also count. All right. So, thanks for giving us some stuff to uh, in, to learn about you, Bethany. You some good content. All right. So let's begin with our my uh, already pre advertised game. Uh, the title of this game, by the way, is feeling superstitious. Feeling superstitious. So what I'm it's multiple choice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to describe a superstition uh, from different cultures around the world, and, with per, per question I mean, and the uh, I'm going to provide uh, different options to choose from as to what to not do with a particular idea or object or being, and your job is to guess the correct uh, superstition to get the point. <clears throat> Are we ready to play? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Excellent. And if uh, for Bethany to know if we're all tied up, there is a tiebreaker point. So we'll see Ooh. if we get to that because I'm actually super excited about the tiebreaker, but you can't predict those. Ooh. All right. <clears throat> First question. In Navajo traditions, what are you not allowed to do to a rainbow? A, look at it. B, point at it. C, spit at it. Or D, name an animal after it. Who would you like to go first, Jenny? Uh, since Bethany is our guest, how about you go first? Spit at it, look at it. Point at it, or name an an animal it. after it. I'm going to say point at it. Okay, Bethany says point at it. What say you, David? I think look at it might be a little too difficult. Because <laughs> how are you going to know it's even there? You're going to see it, right? You're going to see it and you're going to be like, damn it, I looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to not look at a rainbow. That's true. It's so, right there. So, <laughs> so I'm I, like to me logically, it either has to be point at it or name an animal after it. Because I like again spitting at it. It's like seems futile because it's like trying to find the end of it. You're not gonna. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say point at it. Okay, David says point. Philip, what say you? I'm going to be getting a point by saying spitting at it because here's the thing. I bet that there's some religious reason for for the for the rainbow to exist and therefore they say if you spit at it then then all of uh, the entire feng shui is going to be thrown out of whack and you're going to be the reason why everything's just going wrong. So I'm saying you do not spit at it. You do not spit in that general direction. And I furthermore, if you came up with this, Jenny, if you were somehow inventive enough to come up with this, bravo. Absolutely freaking bravo because, my God, I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. All right. Philip says spit at it. 
Well, Philip, you did not get the point this round. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the answer is Damn point at it. So David point and Bethany it. are currently in the lead. So the reason Name an is, animal after so, it. You made that up, Jenny? I did make that one up, yes. That was clever. I That really, really tempted, tempted. me. Tempted, yeah. <laughs> I thought that, yeah. I was so, like- So actually, Philip, you were pretty on the market there. They are considered celestial beings. Or oh, sorry, David- I can't remember now. Philip or David said it. They are considered celestial beings, so you can enjoy it. You can marvel at it. You just don't point at it, or you'll face the wrath of the gods. So don't point at a rainbow, guys. Just, just don't, just don't do it. Our second question is: In Argentina, which two items are considered bad luck when mixed together? Is it A, chocolate cookie? Chocolate. <laughs> Forgive me, I can't chocolate think. Chocolate cooties. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate cookies and pasta noodles b red wine and watermelon c hot dogs and applesauce or d banana slices and anchovies can what we, was the can question we start, yeah can we start up with the, the first fact is that some <laughs> yeah, of these should be mi- some of these should not be mixed up regardless of of like yes. of taboo they just they just should not be mixed together anyway we none of these there. things should be no, mixed together no. yeah but but we have to find but out which ones argentinians have taken a vocal stand which one does Ar- do argentinians say hey that's a terrible idea don't even yeah. think about it so okay. i will read it again okay um, yeah, he's pairing one yeah. more. So in Argentina, which two items in Argentina, which two items are considered bad luck in their country when mixed together? Is it chocolate cookies and pasta noodles, red wine and watermelon, Blah, gross, hot dogs and applesauce, disgusting, <laughs> banana slices and anchovies? Why? I, I know. Why? And yes, you are correct. No one should right. actually mix any of these items together. But which I, Terrib- which option is the option that Argentinians say, don't even think about it? David, David why don't you, you go uh, first? Shall I go first? I am going to say red wine and watermelon. Okay. Philip, what say you? I... My ignorance here is whether or not anchovies are native to Argentina or if there's anywhere that they are not native to that touches water. Um, but, but I can't imagine that the that the Argentinian history was like, hey, uh, hot dogs uh, are so <laughs> repulsive. I just, don't, I, just, I just don't think that hot dogs would enter the culture organically. So I have to right. imagine it's something. Even applesauce kind of seems like a stretch for Argentina. Uh, right. So I Let alone ha- hot dogs. So it is between red wine and watermelon for me, but I will go with, uh, I will go with the anchovies option. I forget what it pairs with, but whatever the hell it was. was Banana. Discussed. Banana slices. Banana. Yeah. I th- Cause I think banana is certainly native to Argentina. It's it's the anchovies that I'm I'm curious about. All right, Bethany, what say you? I don't know. I feel like the only one that stands out would be watermelon and red wine not put together because when I think of watermelon and red wine, I think of sangria and sangria is um, based out of like a different country or is it American? I I I cannot help you with that, Bethany. I, th- I, I have no information there. It is there. Spanish. 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 She's like, and, and I just remind me, where where are the anchovies native to? Are they? <laughs> are they? Yeah. I wish I was that exactly. cool to know. I unfortunately did not do that type of research for this question. <laughs> so I think Argentinians would like separate it rather than the Spaniards because they have their siestas and sangrias <laughs> and whatever. So. <laughs> All right. So, which option do you pick, Bethany? Watermelon and. Red wine, okay. Red wine, right. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, the correct answer is red wine and watermelon. Argentinians do Thank not you want you to God. mix those two things together. They even say this It was combo, the wine that tipped me off. Mm-hmm. They, the big wine country. They, they want you to avoid this, or in some Argentinians actually practice only not combining these two, or they say watermelon shouldn't be paired with any alcohol in general. They can even, uh, it's been talked about or considered to be lethal, but most of the time, if you try to mix it, the worst thing you'll probably get is a bad stomach ache. So we are currently at, Bethany has two points, David has two points, and Philip is unfortunately at zero. So hopefully, Philip, you, um, I hope you're able to catch up on these next couple of questions. 
All right. <laughs> Question three. In Welsh tradition, which se- what self-care regimen should you avoid doing for your baby before they reach six months old? Is it A, put on makeup, B, shave their head, C, feed them eggs, or D, cut their nails? So which, uh, which thing should you not do for your baby before they reach the age of six months old? Oh, I thought it was should and not should not because I'm here. Oh, should I was not. Here ready to pounce. Should you avoid, was, which is considered oh, bad luck. Shoot. I was here ready to pounce on that eggs option. I was like, the, the Welsh, they're my people uh, <laughs> as I am an avid egg lover. What should you not do? Um, I'll go first since I have yet to go first. Um, how yes. about let's do – Let's do makeup. Okay. Makeup. Philip says, don't put makeup on your baby. Bethany, what do you say? Don't cut their hair. Don't don't shave their head? Is it is that, is that one of the options, right? Yes, uh, to shave their head is the haircut one. So okay, okay, that is Bethany. And then David, what say you? All right, I have the luxury of going last, which means I can really lay out my reasoning here. <laughs> There's really no reason why you would shave a baby's head. I mean, there's not much going on up there to begin with. It's been the first six months. Are you kidding me? Um, they come out like you the shouldn't. Fonz. Hey, you shouldn't be feeding your baby eggs at that time of their life either. So I don't think it's that. Like these are just things that that you wouldn't do. So what were the other ones were fingernails and makeup. makeup. Makeup doesn't sound like it would be something that would be related to a superstition. Um, like, again, it's something that you probably shouldn't do, but a superstition, maybe not. But cutting the fingernails definitely seems like it could be a superstition. Like, you're not supposed to cut their fingernails until they... I'm kind of Irish right now, but <laughs> you're not supposed to cut their fingernails until they get to six months old. And the Irish Welsh. <laughs> uh, a Welsh accent is extraordinarily difficult, my yes. friend. Um, yes, 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 yes. I'm going to say uh, cutting fingernails. All right. David says cut their fingernails. And David is correct. Three different you are really feeling. Yes! Oh, God. Damn. You're really, damn. really, you know, the, your gut feelings for these superstitions are right on the money today, David. So. It, yeah. Uh, Welsh tradition, if you cut the nails of a baby before they reach six months old, they will grow to have what they call sticky hands, and they will grow up to become a thief. So don't cut a baby's fingernails or else they might uh, dabble in burglary. Don't even think about it. That's stone cold science right there. <laughs> <laughs> so David is Max. at three, Bethany is at two, and Philip, you are still with the big old zero. I am so sorry, buddy. But I'm hoping you can get a couple more points. If there's a couple more times here where you could potentially get on the board, I'm, I'm staying hopeful for you. All right. So Thank you. for question four, in China, Korea, and Japan, what number mm-hmm. is considered to be a number of bad luck? Is it A, 17, B, 39, C, 4, or D, 18. We are so sorry to be interrupting your regularly scheduled programming, a la the game, this week's game. However, this is uh, Jenny and Philip from the future. From the future, uh, and and days after we originally recorded this portion of the podcast, Jenny, uh, we had some tech issues. (laughs) Oh, we definitely did. Our to the wonderful listeners that are listening right now, we don't know what was going on. We kept having warning labels on our recordings. We kept we lost some footage to the void of the internet. We just don't know what happened. We just want to apologize. We're not going to have the original content, but we're here to make up for it. Uh, we are going to be sharing the rest of the questions from our game, as well as providing the answers. So exactly. we can complete uh, the timeline of the game for you. Um, unfortunately, not in real time with our wonderful guest, Bethany, but we want to make sure that you still enjoy the questions that we researched and and provided that day. So, yeah. Philip, let's go ahead and continue off. So we I you know, I did hear that you said that question 4 was recited. So, yes. I will go ahead and provide the answer. Um so the correct answer um 
is the number four. The reason why the number four is considered a number of bad luck is because the word for the number four in Chinese, Korean, and Japanese languages sounds very similar to the word for death. So David got this question right, and unfortunately, Phil and Bethany did not. So Phil is still at zero points at this time, as well as Bethany for two and David for four. <clears throat> Which so, means that David, with that question, won the game. Uh, yes. He uh, guaranteed his own victory, and he was going for a clean sweep uh, mm-hmm. in the fifth question that you're about to recite, whereas me and Bethany were just playing for pride. More so me, because getting shut out <laughs> is very embarrassing. <laughs> I, I I never nobody ever wants to be the guy who gets uh, just a zero on anything, let alone zero for five questions on a podcast of which I actually am trying to be competitive in. Well, let's find out what happened. So on question five, the question was in rural areas of the United Kingdom, which animal or creature should you not have large numbers of in your house? So the options were A, crickets, B, birds, C, mice. Or D, cockroaches. Now, the correct answer for this uh, last question is mice, option C. Um, It is said that mice used to be prepared and used in folk medicine to cure disease. So if you had large numbers of mice mice in your home, that meant that you were a, a magnet for impending illness or death. So that was a very bad thing <laughs> or bad luck. <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, David did not get a clean sweep. He lost this question. Uh, but Phil in a just a last stroke of of good luck that desperation whacked, desperation that to <laughs> all of the oh above God, he yes. got the question right so he was able to uh, get on the board Victory! for this game yes and Bethany did not get this right either so she stayed at two points for the whole game uh, and like we said David is the victor for this game and now back to our regularly scheduled programming and with that loss I am pathetic. At a one in seven record, David soars to a five and three record. Jenny, as the game host, is st- sitting stagnant at a three and three record. Lord help me. Oh, that slaps the part of the show where we. Bring a little piece of entertainment that has us tickled this uh, this week or this month Woo-hoo. or whatever. Hopefully something new, something fresh that we can recommend to you, the listener, to go and check out. Mine is a song I, I put on my Discover Weekly on Spotify, and it gave me Waiting on the Weekend by Harbor. It's a fun little song. I dare say it slaps. Go check it out. I too am coming at you with a song uh, this week. It is a uh, it is more somber song. And recently, um, Noah Can and uh, a gentleman from the Lumineers uh, did a recent cover of it uh, on Spotify. And as I don't have Spotify Premium, I can't listen to it. So I had to listen to the original one. Love the song. Love the song. The song is called "If We Were Vampires" by Jason Isbell and the Four Hundred Unit. Very somber. Uh, just absolutely uh, just beautiful lyrics almost like poetry it's it's just delightfully uh ingenious and the concept is is wonderful um if we were vampires by jason isbell and the 400 unit that slaps all right we're three for three this week on the that slaps i also have a song i had the absolute privilege to be able to see two amazing bands perform a couple of days ago the first being twrp a canadian a space rock band. Their aesthetic is very much within the 80s space dimension goodness. <laughs> uh, and, and shout out to the bass player, Commander Meowch. Rawr. Anyway, uh, there's also the show opener uh, for this concert for TWRP was Magic Sword. They are also a very uh, space a uh, geeky rock style band from Boise, Idaho. TWRP is Canadian, by the way. Both these bands came together to put a fantastic show and they were able to play their collabor- their collaboration together on stage is one of their final songs in their set list. It's called Terraform. It's an explosive space age instrumental. Please go check it out. Terraform, that slaps. Well, thank you for joining us for another episode. Before we get out of here, we got a few thank yous to get to first. 
Thank you to Cass and Crossland and Jake Corlang for the music that you hear on the show. Thank you to Ryan Ardell. And thanks to Josh Hans for all the audio bits you have heard throughout the show. And thank you, you wonderful listeners, for tuning in with us. Your support means the world. If you're just dipping in your toes in our waters, be sure to check us out on social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, of course, now that we've got our new podcast, we've got a couple of different ways to get to us, uh, whether that be on uh, Roast and Toast on Instagram, Roast and Toast, Roast and Toast Pod. Pod. Roast and Toast Pod, eh? And unfortunately, it's not the same on all platforms. Essentially, look for us, uh, Roast and Toast. Roast and Toast on Twitter, Roast and Toast Pod on Instagram. Yes, especially on Instagram. So thank you for listening, and make sure to follow us on any of your favorite platforms to listen to podcasts, whether that be Spotify, Apple Music, even Google Podcasts, pretty much anywhere except for Pandora. You know why? Because... Screw you, Pandora. Hey, 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 Bob. Am I just baked as a muffin? Or is there a bear standing over here at this funeral? Mm-hmm.